It's Tuesday, July 9th, and you are watching Primetime News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Selima Shumwefeleni Masipa. Leading our newscast tonight, President Nangolo Mbumba says he is keeping mum on his decision on the two anti-gay private member bills brought by Swapo Party lawmaker Jerry Akanjo, which are awaiting his signature. The Ekanjo bills are the Definition of Spouses Bill and the Marriage Amendment Bill, both passed by Parliament in 2023, but not yet signed by the President. Linia Deshina gives us our lead story. The last topic, I cannot comment on it because I have arrows coming from the right and arrows coming from the left. This one is saying do this, the other one is saying sign this, the other one is saying don't sign this, the other one is saying when are you going to do this? I'm keeping <laughs> mum <laughs> because I don't, I, any any step I take, mm. uh, I'm getting deeper in trouble. Mm. But let us be honest to ourselves, to our humanity, to our spirituality, to our history, to what we have read. From whether from the Bible or from any other book, what those writings tell us. We cannot create another world. We, this, is, this is the world. This is huma the humanity, the way we were made. Yeah? Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula, says government spends over 100 million Namibian dollars per year on dialysis services due to the limited number of public dialysis centers across the country. Lydia Petiri brings us this report. Expansion of and introduction of new health services in the public health facilities. The government has approved the introduction of additional health care services in state-owned health facilities. This includes the establishment of intensive care units in all district hospitals around the country, the establishment of dialysis units in several hospitals across the country, the expansion of dental services, and the improvement of oncology services. Before COVID-19 pandemic, there were less than 25 intensive care units, intensive care unit beds in the public health sector. It is for this reason that the ministry has decided to establish intensive care units in all 34 district hospitals around the country. This capacity is important for service delivery and ensuring that services are brought closer to our communities. For a long time, Namibians had to travel long distances from different parts of the country to access dialysis services, mainly in Windhoek, or the government had to spend millions of dollars to refer state patients to private dialysis centers. The government was spending up to 100 million per year for these activities. It has therefore been decided that dialysis service will be established at Katutura Intermediate Hospital, Kirman Swap, Rondu, Oshakati, Oshuarongo, and Wolves Bay Hospitals. The facilities at Katutura and Oshakati Intermediate Hospital have been completed and will be com commissioned for service in the coming weeks. The newly elected president of the National Students' Congress called on all eligible youth to get their voters' cards before the deadline on August 1, 2024. She said this in a press conference which outlined the outcomes of the 18th National Congress. The National Students' Congress underscores the critical role of young people in democratic processes, particularly in the upcoming national elections. We call on all eligible youth to actively engage by registering for a voter's card before the deadline. This is not just a duty, it's a, it's a civic responsibility that rests on every one of us. Voting is not just your right, it's also a responsibility. And as NANSO, we implore on all our members, all students, all trainees, all learners who are eligible, and all young people to go and register to vote. 
It is important that we participate. It also calls on the government of the Republic of Namibia to come up with a detailed human capital development plan that speaks to the needs of our country, that speaks to what our education system needs to produce. We can no longer be producing 10,000 teachers when our education system is perhaps asking for 10,000 lawyers. For there is need to establish a sustainable means of funding education consistently and effectively. The commodification of higher education in Namibia has systematically excluded countless learners, denying them the opportunity to pursue their academic aspirations. We, the delegates of the Congress, held that it is time, and we declare that there must be an education levy that is, is instituted to address these critical issues. We are saying that our mineral resources, our oil, our gas, our fish, our diamonds must be able to pay for education in this country. The Mariental Fire Station received two fire trucks and an ambulance on Monday. The donation was made possible through a collaboration with the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development, the Municipal Council of Murcia in Spain and the Motor Vehicle Accident Fund. In her keynote address, Deputy Minister of Urban and Rural Development, Evelyn Navase Stayele, said the timely donation is a significant contribution towards improving the capacity of the Mariental Firefighting and Rescue Services and improving their ability to protect lives. She said, this project not only protects lives and property in Mariental and the broader Harta region, but also empowers the firefighters with advanced tools for technical operations. Dirk Kluter, manager of the Mariental Fire Station, highlighted the urgent need for these resources, saying there has been a significant number of fire incidences, particularly in informal settlements, where narrow streets pose challenges to the vehicles they currently use. He said these vehicles can navigate narrow streets more effectively, which is crucial for reducing their response time and preventing devastating fires in informal settlements. Kluter elaborated on the capabilities of the new vehicles, which include specialized equipment for handing over. Kluter elaborated on the capabilities of the new vehicles, which include specialized equipment for handling petroleum fires and floodlights for nighttime emergencies. Sylvia Hashandali reporting for Primetime News. Stay tuned for your top roundup with a business segment thereafter. Welcome to the Primetime Biz segment, your premier source for all things business related. Oshana Governor Elia Irimari has called on the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform to reopen the Elolo Abattoir at Oshakati. Here's an insert of the Governor. Yes, and also to, also to mention that yes, we have an abattoir Efforts have been made from the government, mostly from the ministry, mostly by the ED, to ensure that you know this abattoir come into operation. You know, as a result of conflict, humanly conflict, this project is still idle. Nothing is happening, and it can you know offer employment and also change the livelihood of our communities and our people in general. So it's my call that 
some, you know, let's quickly do something so that you can reopen the Oshakati Herolo Abatua. <coughs> Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform Executive Director Ndiaku Pingituamata says a total of 121,079 cattle have been vaccinated against foot and mouth disease during the current financial year. Konjeni Ambinga brings us this report. Ndia Kupini Tuwamata, the Executive Director of Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, during an engagement with various management heads within the ministry from all 14 regions at Oshakati on Monday, said of this number, 108,422 cattle were vaccinated in infected zones and 12,657 were vaccinated in protection areas. She further said a total of 26,970 cattle were tagged with official ear tags by veterinary officials. She as well said animal disease surveillance is a major activity of the Directorate of Veterinary Services. She further added that routine active and passive surveillance activities include farm inspections, community visits, anti- and post-mortem inspections at abattoirs, supervision and livestock inspections at livestock auctions, export inspections and certification and inspection of imported animals and animal products. Meanwhile, Nituamata indicated that a total of 25,089 dogs and cats were vaccinated against rabies in the northern communal areas in the current financial year. The engagement with the ministry's various management heads ends on Friday. Sheila Perestrella reporting for Primetime News. It's now a look at what the weather has in store for us tomorrow in the weather report, followed by a roundup of the latest economic news.
Welcome to Sport Planet, your hub for sporting action. We commence with Euro action. Netherlands defender Mickey van der Ven expects the Euro 2024 semi-final against England on Wednesday to be a Premier League type clash. The Tottenham centre-back is one of several Dutch players who play in England along with Liverpool duo Virgil van Dijk and Cody Gakpo among others. England's matches have been slow-paced, largely dull affairs this summer, but the meeting with the Dutch in Dortmund could produce a higher-octane duel. Meanwhile, Luke Shaw said he is ready to repay the faith shown in him by England manager Gareth Southgate after overcoming injury problems to feature at Euro 2024. Southgate's decision to take Shaw as his only natural left-back in a 26-man squad has been lambasted with the Manchester United man sidelined for most of the tournament. However, the 28-year-old made his first appearance for the club or country since February as a late substitute as England beat Switzerland on penalties to set up a semi-final meeting with the Netherlands on Wednesday. The last four months have been really tough. Um, I think obviously at the start I was expected to come back a lot sooner, but you know I, I went through quite a few setbacks to be honest. But um, I'm here now. Um, yeah, and it was really nice to get on the other night. Um, I've been itching to to get some minutes. It's it's been a, lo a long while, but yeah, no, really pleased that, that I was able to get get on the pitch and and get some minutes. And of course now hopefully get some more in the next game. I think I am, um, but obviously that's solely down to, to Gareth's decision on, on what he does. Um, but how I feel, you know, I, I feel fit and I'm ready to go. Stay tuned for your sports roundup. This concludes your Tuesday edition of Primetime News. Many thanks for tuning in. Do make time to join us tomorrow for another engaging edition. On behalf of myself, Salima Shumwefeleni Masipa, and the crew behind the scenes, it's good night. Good night. That was fantastic.